We're just over 10% into the Major League Baseball season, about 20 games, and there have been some incredibly surprising players. Now, I'm not talking about the surprisingly bad guys. That would be a different video. Today, I want to focus on the 10 most surprising players that have actually been good this year. So these are guys that maybe we didn't expect to play as well as they are, or guys that are playing even better than we once thought, or good players that are playing at a different level. I'd love to know if there's any guys that I left out in today's video, so let me know who you think is the most surprising player in baseball this year so far in the comment section down below. And also, also, I want to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. If you love fantasy sports, Underdog Fantasy is the place for you. So click the link in my description and use promo code GNM when signing up and you will get your first time deposit matched up to $100 absolutely free. There's a variety of different ways to play on Underdog. I've been really enjoying the daily fantasy drafts and highly recommend it. Today's draft is the Friday Fastball, which is only $5 to enter and you get put into a six person draft with a chance to win up to $1,000 if you come in first place. Maybe daily drafts aren't your style. You can can use underdogs pick them feature which allows you to pick higher or lower on a player's stats for a specific game that day you can even ensure your picks so that if you get one wrong you still have a chance to win so make sure you guys click the link in the description and use promo code gnm when signing up so underdog can match your first time deposit up to 100 absolutely free thank you to underdog for sponsoring today's video so far in 17 games andrew mccutcheon's hitting 310 with a 417 on base 586 slugging and an ops over 1000 with four home runs nine rbis and three stolen bases what's shocking about andrew mccutcheon is not only has he had great traditional stat numbers, but all his percentile rankings and the fancy numbers look great too. Defensively, he's been phenomenal in the outfield for the Pirates when he's been out there, which is a bit surprising as he's getting older in age. He's cut down the strikeout rate dramatically to start the 2023 season, continuing to walk at a very high rate and hitting the ball really hard. McCutcheon seems to have tapped into a little bit of the fountain of youth in Pittsburgh. Glad to see him back in the city that he started out and playing as well as he is and leading the Pirates to what is probably the most surprising start to the season because the Pirates look pretty good. So I'm happy that Andrew McCutcheon is the first guy in the video today because I think a lot of people were starting to count him out a little bit, but he's been surprisingly good. Next surprising player for me has to be Jorge Mateo. Could be the most surprising player in Major League Baseball. Now I know Mateo played well at times down the stretch last year for the Baltimore Orioles, but he is doing different things this season. Jorge Mateo last year was a guy who did not hit the ball very hard at all. He had a hard hit rate of around 32% last season, a K rate at 27%, there wasn't a whole lot good going on for Jorge Mateo, but this year, Mateo's been hitting the ball harder, more consistently, and of course, he's still a phenomenal athlete like we saw throughout his entire career. So far through 16 games, Mateo's hitting 362 with a 418 on base, 638 slugging, and a 1056 OPS with three home runs, four doubles, 12 RBIs, and eight stolen bases, which is tied for third in Major League Baseball. Mateo did just go down with an injury, but it looks like it's going to be day to day, and he's pretty much taken over the everyday role at shortstop for the Orioles. So for a guy who used to be a former top prospect, it's great to see that at age 27, things are starting to come together. Jorge Mateo with a healthy season looks like he might have a special one. The exit velos look real. That combination of power and speed could be dangerous. First pitcher in today's video is going to be Justin Steele of the Chicago Cubs. Justin Steele finished 2022 pretty strong, having some good appearances for the Cubs, but 2023, he's been a little bit different. The K rate's up to 26.4%. He's walking less batters, giving up slightly less hard contact, along with getting batters to chase a lot more, getting batters to swing and miss a lot more. He's just overall been a much better pitcher, and it's part of the reason why the Cubs have had some early success this season. Now, Justin Steele is not going to blow you away with any of his stuff, but his slider does have a whiff rate this year right around 40%, which is in the elite range. And since becoming pretty much a two-pitch pitcher, he's been a lot better. In his four starts thus far this year, 25 innings, he has 24 strikeouts, a whip at 0.88, which is just disgusting, and an ERA at 1.44. So keep an eye out for Justin Steele this season with the Chicago Cubs. Looks like they got a really good left-handed starter who could make an impact for this team this year and make them very competitive. Not to double up on the Cubs players here, but they have a couple good ones. Let's talk about Cody Bellinger, who is definitely surprising some people right now. Cody Bellinger, the last few years with the Los Angeles Dodgers, had looked horrible. A 193 average with a 256 on base, 355 slugging, 611 OPS, and OPS plus is 65. I mean, Bellinger looked like a lost cause. The Dodgers just straight up got rid of him. The Cubs swooped him up quickly in the offseason, and it looks like it's paying off thus far. Through 17 games this year, Cody Bellinger has three home runs, three doubles, and 12 RBIs while stealing three bases, hitting 284 with a 347 on base, 463 slugging, and an 809 OPS for an OPS plus at 119. Now again, none of these numbers really jump off the page, but for a guy who looks so criminally lost the last few seasons. It's encouraging as a Cubs fan or as a fan of baseball to see Cody Bellinger getting at least closer to where he once was. Do I think he'll be at an MVP level? No. Do I think he could play at an all-star level? Maybe. And that alone is shocking because if you saw him play the last two 
three years, you might think this guy's career is over. He's completely cut down the K rate, 85th percentile in strikeout rate right now. So he struck out 14% of the time. That's lower than when he had his MVP season in 2019. The walk rate is not yet back to those elite levels, but it's still solid enough, and he's just not swinging and missing while playing great defense. So is Cody Bellinger that great all-star MVP type player he once was? Probably not, but is he a very capable player who's making a positive impact for the Cubs right now? For sure. Let's move it on over to the National League East this time to talk about Philadelphia Phillies center fielder Brandon Marsh. Brandon Marsh came over to the Phillies last year in the trade with Logan Ohapi, and right now it's paying off for both teams. Brandon Marsh is definitely off to the best start of his career thus far. In 17 games this season, Brandon Marsh has three home runs, six doubles, three triples, and 11 RBIs, hitting 368 with a 419 on base, 737 slugging, and a National League best 1156 OPS with an OPS plus at 208. Again, he's not going to sustain these numbers. That would be one of the best seasons of all time. But Brandon Marsh is hitting the ball harder, hitting it more consistently, swinging and missing less, despite still striking out a lot. But the whiff rate definitely is down, which is great. He's not chasing as much either. He's barreling up the baseball, playing good defense out in center field. This is exactly what the Philadelphia Phillies desperately needed because they really have not had a center fielder for the last few seasons. I mean, they were rocking Odubel Herrera out there. So again, yeah, we know Brandon Marsh isn't going to hit 350. He's not going to have a thousand OPS this season, but Brandon Marsh being a very capable defensive center fielder, along with being able to swing an above league average bat could be absolutely huge for the Phillies who are struggling mightily thus far this year. Marsh looks like he might be a good pickup for those Phillies. The next player, I feel like like we need to talk about. Joe Ryan of the Minnesota Twins. Joe Ryan's first full Major League season last year was really solid. 147 innings, 3.55 ERA, a whip at 1.1. This year, Joe Ryan has been a little bit different. Joe Ryan has gotten rid of the changeup, curveball, and slider, and instead is now going with a four-seam, split finger, and sweeper, and it has completely changed his repertoire. He's a different pitcher. Joe Ryan was a guy who sat around a K rate of about 25%. Now he's above 30%. He's walking way less batters, a walk rate at 4.2%, where his career average is about seven. He's getting a ton of whiffs. He's getting batters to chase. He's looking absolutely filthy. It seems like the Minnesota Twins might have figured something out on the pitching side because I could have included Pablo Lopez in this video as well. Both of those guys have been phenomenal. And like I said, in Joe Ryan's four starts this year, 3.24 ERA in 25 innings with 29 strikeouts and a whip at 0.76. The Twins have not lost a game that he has pitched this season. He's having a really, really good year. And I honestly think it's going to stick. The stuff has looked filthy. Nobody's touching them. And the K rate's disgusting. I thought Joe Ryan was good, but not this good. Very surprised. All right, let's talk about him. This one hurts me as a Mets fan, but Jared Kelnick is very surprising this season. Up until this year, we had seen Jared Kelnick play just shy of about 150 games, to which he was hitting 168 with a 251 on base, 338 slugging, and a 589 OPS. It was bad. Kelnick looked lost. He didn't look ready for the majors yet. But so far in the 17 games this year, Kelnick has been locked in, and you start to see that special player that everyone once saw. Kelnick has four home runs, five doubles, and nine RBIs on the season with three stolen bases, hitting 310 with a 385 on base, 603 slugging, and a 988 OPS for an OPS plus at 180. Kelnick's average exit velo is 83rd percentile along with a max exit velo of 87th percentile. He still is striking out a lot, but again, the whiff rate is down, so those are positive signs, and he's not chasing, which is also huge. He is currently 90th percentile in barrel rate. He has seven barrels out of the 38 batted balls he has this season. He's playing crazy well. He's got that walk rate above 10% at 11 and half. The K rate under 30%, which could be huge for him. Kelnick looks like he might have figured it out a little bit. And it's going to be huge for the Mariners, who could use a little offensive help. So while he was a former Met, and I definitely wasn't too happy that he got traded, I am glad to see that he is playing well for the Mariners. This could be a positive trade for both sides here. And that's not a bad thing. As long as Jared Kelnick doesn't hurt the Mets, I hope he does amazing out in Seattle. And it looks like he might have figured it out this season. This next player may not be as surprising as the others, but can you believe how good Matt Chapman has been this year, we know he has been a very good player at times in his career. Look back at 2018 and 19 in Oakland, but it had been a few years since we saw him reach those heights. The start of 2023 for Matt Chapman is actually out of control. In 18 games, he has five homers, nine doubles, 17 RBIs, hitting 397 with a 461 on base, 750 slugging, and a 1211 OPS, the best in Major League Baseball, with a 237 OPS plus. Here's where the Matt Chapman stats start to get crazy. We start looking at the Savant and percentile numbers here. He is 100 percentile and average exit velo, hard hit rate, ex woba, ex slugging and barrel rate. He's 94th percentile in max exit velo, 99th percentile in expected batting average and 90th percentile in chase rate. Along with the fact that he cut the strikeout rate down to only 20% this year and he's walking right around 10%, he's playing out of his mind. But this right here is my favorite stat. Matt Chapman has put 50 balls into play this season and he's hit 
33 of them 95 miles per hour or harder. He has an average exit velo at 97.4 miles per hour on the balls that he's hitting to play. That's insane. His barrels per plate appearance is at 23.6%. The next closest is Jorge Soler at 17.7%. Not even close. So yeah, we all knew Matt Chapman was talented, but the way that he's playing right now is actually out of this world. And in a contract year, yeah, Matt Chapman might be getting paid this offseason. The penultimate player in today's video, back to the pitching side here, Aroldis Chapman. Chapman looked relatively dead last year. Didn't seem like he had much left in the tank. So much so that almost nobody showed up to his offseason workouts this year, and he had to take a contract with the Royals. But boy, oh boy, do the Royals look like geniuses right now because Aroldis Chapman is so back. The fastball velo is completely back. I mean, the dude was touching 102 the other day. The spin rates are back. The extension looks phenomenal. And nobody is touching Aroldis Chapman this season. Chapman has made seven appearances for the Royals in seven innings, has only given up two hits, and only walked two batters, which is massive. Oh yeah, and he struck out 13 of the 25 batters he's faced this year, so it's a 52% K rate with a walk rate at 8%. That's absolutely disgustingly elite. Chapman has an ERA of 0. He has a whip at .571. If Chapman's able to get the velo, get the spin, get the break, and get the swings and misses at the rate he is right now, along with limiting walks and limiting hits, you're going to be looking at the most coveted arm at the trade deadline without a doubt. A guy that felt like a bit of an afterthought this offseason might end up being one of the most sought-after pieces at the trade deadline. A roll to Chapman is back. And then last but certainly not least, it's weirdly the third cub of the video. It's gonna be Patrick Wisdom. I can't put him on here. He's just hit home runs. That's it. He's so gonna regress so hard. You know, fine. Let's do Patrick Wisdom. Last but certainly not least, Patrick Wisdom of the Chicago Cubs. And I don't even necessarily feel great about this one, but I will say I am surprised at how well he's playing because relatively speaking, nothing has changed from the previous years. He still strikes out at a crazy high rate. He still hits the ball extremely hard and he's still kind of like a barrel king. But now he's just getting the results. Maybe it's the baseball. Maybe something has changed for Patrick Wisdom. I don't truly understand why he is playing so much better. Like he still strikes out way too much and he still doesn't really walk that much but he does have the major league lead eight home runs 15 rbis he's hitting 279 with a 343 on base 754 slugging which is insane and a 1097 ops the numbers are more of the surprising thing with patrick wisdom not that any of his skill set has really changed so maybe this is a little bit of a cop out because i feel like everybody will get mad at me if i didn't include him but patrick wisdom definitely having a surprising start to the year for sure so those are the most surprising players in major league baseball in my opinion this season i'd love to know who you guys think is the most surprising player down in the comment section below. I'm sure I forgot someone, so tell me who you think it is. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. It really does help support my channel, as well as subscribe. I know a bunch of you aren't subscribed, so make sure you click that sub button so you can join the team. Drop me a follow on all my social media, at GiraffeNeckBark. Links are in description. And that's where I'll wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video, and this is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye!